<laughs> so, but it is still though on YouTube. You can just go and look at it. Wait, what do you do? Mr. Brian McGregor. You can still go on the Facebook and just take a link from one of those, and that shows all my videos. Did you know that there's a love and dislike button now? No. On Facebook, yeah. There is. All right. Um, now we go ahead and do this last problem. Again, I'm gonna write it in the quadratic form. So when looking at a problem like this, I've already tr I've already tested my solutions. I already know that um, if this is not factorable. I can't. I don't see any perfect squares. I can't. I don't want to complete the square. Um, it's just going to be a messy problem anyway. I try to factor it. So my last and final step, when I cannot figure out how to factor something, I do not see any shortcuts. I'm going to use our lovely quadratic formula, which is opposite of b plus or minus the square root b squared minus four times a times c all over two a. Now, from the beginning of when we've been doing quadratic equations, functions, I've always been telling you, the first thing I always want you to do is label what your a, b, and c are. So over here, I have my a equals 1, b equals 8, and c equals 2. And I relate them to this quadra to the quadratic form over here. Now all it simply is, a is not equal 1, thank you. Now all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to evaluate for when a equals 3, b equals 8, c equals 2, into this formula. Therefore, I have a negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times 3 times c all over 2 times 3. And one last thing I want to mention is what is, what is this equal? What do you get when you do the quadratic formula? Well, it's actually what your intercepts are. So now we're solving, this is actually solving for x. So next thing is I'm going to want to actually evaluate what's in my discriminant. So when I evaluate my discriminant, I have 64 minus 4 times 3, which is um, 12 times 2 is 24. 64 minus 20 is giving the square root of 40. Now, if you remember the discriminant test, Whenever you have b squared minus 4 times a times c, when that is greater than 0, you're going to have real solutions. <coughs> so therefore, my answer is going to be real. Now, if it's a square number, that means if it's 9, 16, 4, 25, 36, 49, 64, if it's a, if it's a square number, then your solutions are going to be rational. And if it's not a square number, like square root of 40, you're going to have an irrational um, real numbers. And the last thing is, if I had a b squared minus 4 times a times c less than 0, then it's still it's going to be a complex solution. That means it's going to have 5. It's going to be negative, because right, you can't take the square root of a negative number. And last thing, if b squared minus 4 times a times c is equal to 0, well, therefore, you're only going to have um, you only have one, uh, one real, one root. All right, moving away from that. So therefore, now I have x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 40 divided by 6. So I go look at this, and I say, can I factor out my square root of 40 at all? And you say, well, yeah, Mr. McGill, you can. Because square root of 40 can be broken down into the square root of 4 times 10. And why do I break down the square root of 4 times 10? Because 4 is my largest square number that goes into 40. And I want square numbers because when I have a square number, I can actually take the square of that number. Okay? So when I can actually take the square of that number. So it really helps me out to go and see how to find the square of that number. All right? Good. Therefore, I have 2 times square root of 10. So now I'm going to rewrite this, x equals negative 8 plus or minus 2 square root of 10 divided by 6. And then I notice all of these I can factor out a 2. So when I factor out a 2 out there, I'm left with 3, that becomes a 1, that becomes a negative 4. So x equals a negative 4 plus square root of 10 divided by 3 and 
x equals a negative 4 minus square root of 10. Right. So those would be my two roots. Right. So when you guys can't find a shortcut and you can't factor it, you can always fall back on the quadratic formula. Just make sure that you simplify your radical as much as possible and use your discriminant test to understand what your answer is going to be.